we just review the action potential that occurs in neurons. So this, for example, would be a motor neuron, which is able to initiate one of these action potentials. That action potential is carried down the axon, of course, after being initiated at that axon hillock, and is going to um, release neurotransmitter, ACH, acetylcholine, um, onto the muscle cells or muscle fibers. Acetylcholine is going to bind to acetylcholine receptors and initiate an action potential in the muscle itself. So the skeletal muscle is going to also have an action potential. It looks fairly similar to your um, neural action potential. I'm gonna show you a picture of it that's a little simplified. The same components are causing depolarization and then repolarization as compared to our motor neuron. And it's a pretty darn quick response. So let's look at what the action potential looks like in our skeletal muscle before we go on to looking at it in our cardiac muscle, because it's gonna be different. So here is a schematic of that action potential in the skeletal muscle. And this is kind of just showing simplified up depolarization, repolarization. A couple things that are different than our neuron is resting membrane tends to be a little lower in skeletal muscle. Oh, you'll still see different numbers, um, different places, but the resting membrane potential is a little bit more negative in a skeletal muscle. Rising phase due to sodium entry, repolarization due to potassium leaving, and very quick. Um, I thought you something it's not on here. I'm gonna add that here. So this is this whole thing here about this time right there is at one to two milliseconds. What that means is these refractory periods are also very short. So here's our absolute refractory period that's due to the inactivation of the potassium channels. So no action potential can occur, a second one. Absolute refractory period versus here is our relative refractory period, stronger um, syllabus stimulus than normal would be needed. It's a relative refractory period. And these are especially significant for muscle because this means you cannot, um, this is gonna correspond to refractory periods in contraction. So I wanna go over, this is our action potential. Remember our excitation contraction coupling. So what does this look like if we look at what this action potential does to muscle contraction? The y-axis is going to be tension and still over time. Oops, oops. So this is what it looks like down here. This is time, um, still in milliseconds, still, still pretty darn, darn quick, and tension on our y-axis. And this is the contraction that's generated by this single action potential. So we're just looking at a single action potential. This would be a twitch, a muscle twitch. Um, we're not going to talk about summation right now, which is if you have multiple action potentials firing together, and that allows you actually to, to move because we're gonna go over to cardiac muscle. But what I wanna show you here is notice that these refractory periods are over before we've even reached maximal muscle tension. So with skeletal muscle, the refractory periods are, are relatively short. Um, this allows that summation to occur. So if we wanted to have um, another action potential and another muscle contraction, continued muscle contraction occur, we could have that add on to here because even the relative refractory period is over before we even reach the peak of our contraction. So that's gonna be important for when we compare this to how cardiac muscles are their refractory periods are going to look different. And that's important for how they function. Just a teaser, you don't want summation to occur in your cardiac muscle. You want to have one single pump all the time. All right, we're going to, in the next video, go over action potentials in the two other muscle types.